So first things first to talk about, and you know, might as well get it out of the way because it's quite nice and quite cathartic to get a little bit of like capital H hate out of the way, just to kind of get it out of your system. But God almighty, man, I saw one of the most depressing pieces of news I've seen in a long, long time. Like, it made me it made me want to cry deep down inside. It made me want to cry. I was like, oh, man, come on. This is capital L lame. And as you guys know, I'm not the biggest fan of Hidden NY. And most of those kind of meme aggregate kind of pages, because for the most part, they're devoid of any originality. Um, they're essentially the sort of um they're essentially those blogs that you used to have back in the day on tumblr like you'd, you'd have your own little tumblr that you will be you know curating and spending time gathering images maybe even scanning stuff in like i was and then bigger platforms that were super lame had no taste or just be reposting your stuff with no credits right and or retumbling however the, the term was called on their thing and it basically they take your stuff and make it pop obviously because they had a bigger platform whilst you'll be there kind of fighting for scraps so it kind of reminds me of that but now in this sort of new age it feels like a cheat way to kind of sh to kind of pretend like you get it to pretend like you're um you're in the know to pretend like you're down to pretend like you were outside when you weren't really outside you're just kind of re you know um you're just kind of um creating this weird imagined nostalgia right you're just kind of trying to rewrite history in real time and trying to make it seem like you were there when we were outside when you weren't really so pages like hidden and why do that a lot by posting all these you know old rick owing pictures these old pictures of flipping nigo of hiroshi fujiwara um old pictures of supreme the original stores james jebbia skaters on supreme supreme all this other stuff and it makes it kind of seem like these guys are like entrenched in streetwear community they're entrenched they're entrenched in the sneaker community they're entrenched in the culture in general and that isn't the case because most of these guys are dweebs and they're super young so it's not gonna run in terms of you being outside you wasn't it's just how it isn't gonna it doesn't the maths ain't mathing so obviously one of the pages hidden and why i'm not really a fan of at all in the slightest they have making a collaboration with flipping nerd mate nerd like do you know how heartbreaking that is being an avid flipping pharrell fanboy that i am being an absolute fanboy of nerd from back in the day and even myself as well i have a really com weird relationship with pharrell and nerd because i was around at the time when the people that i used to go out with and stuff and go to queue outside of stores like we'd go to places like you know like busy workshop do you guys remember that it was a uh, the original uh bape store in flipping upper james street in london right it was fucking amazing looking we used to queue outside this flipping establishment um all the time for the new drops and stuff and usually we didn't get it because all these other cunts who were basically favored by the store clerks because they would buy more than us of course would end up kind of getting the first dibs on items or they'd only order uh, you know they'd have like chomper jacket i remember there's a cause chopper jacket that i really wanted but they only had like four or something and two of the staff members took it so only two are available on the shop floor by the time we got in there i was already gone like it got to the point where i was queuing up one day and i don't know what it was it must have been like a shark hoodie drops or something and they all sold out by the time i got to the store and the only thing i could buy was a bit of sellotape like and i bought a bit of sellotape to make myself feel good they put it in a little bag and everything i felt so pathetic man but that was the kind of time that i was about and the really weird thing about this era was that we were all on, we were kind of all on BAPE and all that stuff. Yeah, we were kind of all on BAPE at the same time that Pharrell was. It was kind of strange. He was kind of getting into the same time that he was meeting Nigo. So it wasn't like he was like our hero. Oh, look at him. He's away and stuff like how he is now. No, it wasn't really that thing at all. So I mostly appreciate Pharrell from that music standpoint. If anything, when it came to BAPE stuff, I kind of found him corny. Like, oh, if he's wearing it, I'm not going to wear it because it's lame. And then when he started doing the BBC stuff, it started to become a little bit more easier to kind of, you know, digest because the BBC aesthetically was a lot different than what Bape was doing. But still, it was a weird relationship. You know, people that around that time would know, like people didn't really vibe with Pharrell that way. But the music side, of course, you know, I'm a fucking, you know, yeah, there's no need to talk about In Search Of and what that kind of did for me and kind of growing up and whatnot. But, you know, big fan of it. And the sad thing about this hidden and wide thing, especially when it comes to me and NERD, is that back in the day, like a lot of people, I'm assuming, who were in love with Pharrell, in love with NERD, um, you know, and everything else surrounding that group, I used to screen print these hats. Like, I used to get these hats, this logo, right? I'd get it from flipping Google Images or whatnot, and I'd, and I'd take this and I'd put it on some heat transfer paper, you know, do the whole reverse image stuff, and then iron that onto T-shirts, iron that onto trucker hats. I made my own trucker hat because I couldn't find them because now you can find them, you know, you can. I'm, I'm sure you can 
probably be able to find a flipping NERD hat on Amazon or something. But back in the day, it was hard to find them. And the legit ones were really expensive. I think at the time, they're like £60 or something for a legit NERD trucker hat. And I remember their trucker hats were the first ones I saw where the buckle or the strap at the back had like two rows of of like holes and clips and stuff to clip it with most truck has had the one so when you saw it you're like wow this is like premium but it's just a different type of strap you never saw before and the and the shape of it was a bit more boxy it wasn't as flat as some truck had some kind of used to seeing it and whatnot so i did that whole thing and i remember i sold i think i sold a couple at my church or maybe i gave a couple away i think because i forgot what it was but that was the thing i'd wear like the white one with the billion with the bbc logo on it billion boys club that original logo i did the nrd thing so i was engrossed in it i was obsessed with this guy so much so to see them collaborate with such a lame lamezoid page like hidden ny breaks my heart and the only thing that makes me somewhat you know happy about this collaboration and the lameness of it is the fact that it looks kind of crap you know i mean just like you know no no hate aside like just kind of objectively looking at it the logo and hidden at the bottom it just looks kind of terrible it doesn't really make any sense the logo is probably the logo is probably a bit too big and the font's too wide i don't like how wide that font is outside of the you know what i mean it just looks a bit strange i don't like that at all um the colors as well don't look that great um and yeah it just looks a bit shit to be honest it looks like the kind of thing somebody that wears flipping gallery department would, would be into do you know what i mean like that's the kind of thing you'd be into your gallery department with your flipping um palm angels um you know sandals and shit that's the kind of stuff you'd wear for sure but for someone like myself who was actually outside when this was happening and who you know would regard myself as having a modicum of taste not the most taste not the best taste but i have a little sprinkling of it this is a bit dead i'm not going to lie actually that logo is better this logo i prefer if i had to choose i prefer this logo with hidden across the flipping um brain um, bulb thing then the one they have here where it's underneath yeah i mean it just doesn't look that great that hidden nerd of course looks perfect but this looks just terrible in general you know and the model giving it the blue steel as well not the best the, even the pictures aren't that well done as well the pictures are just terrible like it's not the model's fault but it's just you know the idea behind the pictures there's no no artistry behind it nothing really interesting or creative what story are they telling nothing it's just we're able to kind of you know latch upon this jump on it whoever's licensing any idea at the moment as well this is just like an easy win to get some product out then shift it and sell it to kids who are trying to you know um rewrite history create a bit of imagined nostalgia and pretend that they're taking part in something that they weren't really taking part in but yeah it's just terrible i hate everything about it and also the hoodie why has it got these like yeah it's just the pot the the kangaroo pocket thing with these seams I, I just don't like it i think it's all pretty shit personally um and definitely won't be worth whatever cash they're flipping charging for this let's see how much they are charging for it actually okay no idea on price interesting copy the hidden and wine nerd collection is set to release october 7th for hidden members <laughs> imagine being a member of that fucking shit um at 12 p.m et it's bad enough you follow the page and you think the guy is actually saying anything interesting to being an actual member of it is absolutely that's lame juice isn't it that's epitome of lame juice that's like going to like a that's like going to like a seminar where they teach you how to customize trainers. It's like, what? Just watch a YouTube video or just try it. Buy some shit shoes and paint them yourself. Why are you going to a, a convention and paying some sneaker designer to let you know how to put Python flipping material on a pair of Jordan 1s? Just work out some new ideas. But regardless, it's just not the best for me. I don't, I'm not really a fan of it at all in the slightest. But hey, I'm happy I kind of lived the experience I did at the time when it was relevant and it was somewhat important to my life because, you know, the, you wouldn't catch me dead walking in that stuff. Not in a, not in, not a chance, not a bloody chance.